Intro to English, Speaking and Pronunciation. Video 9, Basic Phonetic Analysis. Part 1, Review. The IPA and Graphemes. Introduced in Video 2, the International Phonetic Alphabet is a direct way to learn the phonemes of almost any language. The IPA uses symbols, many of which resemble letters in the English alphabet, that are associated with specific sounds. This makes it easier to learn and discuss the sounds of a language without involving the complicated issue of spelling. Throughout this video series, we have learned the 46 sounds in English using the IPA symbols. We have also discussed how to associate these symbols with the various ways that we spell these sounds in English. As discussed in video 2, graphemes are the written way to express sounds in a language. In many languages, there is a strong connection between the visual or graphemic representation and the sounds that are associated with them. This is not true in English. The major reason is that English has been influenced by many different languages throughout its development, especially in the areas of spelling and pronunciation. In this final video of the series, our objective is to answer the following questions. How can we better understand the connection between the IPA and graphemes in English? And how can understanding the language of origin help us in learning more about this connection? Question number one. How can we understand this connection? Let's go back to an example we used earlier in the video series. Knee. Now let's look at the IPA representation of this word as found on dictionary.com. Watch how we can find this information. So by typing in dictionary.com and in the search feature typing in the word knee. Dictionary.com is a wonderful resource to find the definitions of words, but in this particular video we're going to see how it can help us with spelling and pronunciation. Here at the top of the screen we can see uh, the word itself and then a little speaker, which when we click on the speaker the word will be pronounced for us. Now here we notice that there is uh, a pronunciation guide, but this is mainly for native English speakers. Since we are using the IPA, you can also click to see the IPA spelling of the word. And we can see it listed here. So once again, here is the word and its IPA representation, as we see on the screen. So if you notice, this means that the word has two phonemes or sounds. And let's separate them out. N e. N e. Now we are going to graphemically represent these sounds. So as you can see here, we have now assigned the graphemes to their particular phonetic representation. Now if you recall, we discussed that the K is actually silent, though it used to be pronounced in the past. What do you notice? the number of graphemes is the same. As mentioned earlier, the grapheme is the visual or written way to represent the sounds of a language. The challenge is that we had to consider a little of the origin of the word in order to understand how it would be spelled. So our first spelling tip is to think about that the number of graphemes in a word is equal to the number of phonemes. Question number two. How can understanding the language of origin help us with this connection? Well, again, thinking about with our example, ni, we had to know that this word was of Germanic origin, though it began much earlier than that, coming from the Old Norse language. 
Knowing a little bit of the language of origin can help you in improving your spelling of words, especially in recognizing spelling patterns. Let's look at some of these graphemic ideas and how they are represented in English. Let's begin by looking at some words from Old English and Middle English. Again, we have referenced spelling patterns KN with the IPA N, such as in no, knife, and knee. But we also have patterns such as EIGH with the represented by the IPA symbol A, as in slay, eight, 18, 80. We also have IGH representing the diphthong I, as in night, light fight. And in the spelling pattern of the digraph ng represented by the ng symbol as in sing, thing, and hang. These two patterns are often very difficult for students to recognize. UGH in this case is represented by the IPA f as in laugh, tough, rough, and cough. But in these words, the spelling pattern UGH represents the IPA aw, as in caught, thought, and bought. We also have the CH or TCH digraph and trigraph with the CH sound, as in watch, each, catch, and also the digraph SH producing the sh sound, and wash, ship, and fish. Let's do a graphemic analysis activity together and demonstrate how it works. First, let's discuss the steps. Step one, we need to identify how many sounds or phonemes are in these words. Now the hint here will that, is that we will be using IPA symbols to identify that. Then, step two, we will try to determine how we can graphemically represent these sounds. Now, two hints to think about is that the number of phonemes is equal to the number of graphemes. And then we also need to think about some of the spelling patterns that we just presented in the, fall in the previous slides. So again, these words are words from Old English and Middle English. Let's take a look at them. Night. Hitch. Shipping, slough, rang, taut, bridge. Now first we want to identify how many sounds are in each word. Well again, this is where the IPA is going to help us. So we will display now the IPA spellings of these particular words. So let's take night to discuss here. First off, you will notice that in the word night, if we count the number of phonetic symbols, we have three sounds. But we have to recognize, uh, we have to remember how to separate the phonetic symbols from each other. So, for example, we've got the first symbol, n. The second symbol, we have to recall, is actually two characters. If you recall, i involves both of these characters. So, again, that would be one sound here. And then finally, the t sound. So again, part of the idea is when we count the international phonetic alphabet symbols, we have to remember how some of the, how the characters work together. So let's look now and see how many sounds are in each word based on the number of uh, IPA symbols we see. So let's go through each one. We've discussed night already. Let's discuss hitch. Itch. Sh ip ing. Sluff. Er ang. T ot. B er itch. So the idea is to go through and count the number of IPA symbols and you will have the number of sounds that exist in each word. 
Now we're going to try to identify the graphemes. Now remember, the number of sounds is equal to the number of graphemes. So this is how we're actually going to separate out each grapheme for each sound. So again, let's try night as our example. So as we said in, earlier in the video, KN, the N will be silent. Uh, the K will be silent and we'll hear only N. I, the IGH, the G and the H are silent here. And the T sound. So the idea is to recognize how these particular sounds are spelled. But we had to know something about their language of origin in order to uh, understand their spelling. Go ahead and take a moment and look at the screen so that you can check your answers. So, spelling tip. English has more sounds than letters in the alphabet. But in words, it is often the opposite. A word will often have more letters than sounds. Let's continue our discussion with more graphemic considerations. When referring to words that are Latin-based, many of the graphemic considerations uh, fall into certain patterns. For example, we mentioned the digraph sh and the suffix shun, spelled T-I-O-N, and S-I-O-N. So again, we have words such as nation, information, dedication, relaxation. We also have words such as dimension, extension, and tension. The T-I and C-I also make the sh sounds in other words, such as patience, influential, spatial, and also in special and precious. When referring to Greek-based considerations, we've mentioned earlier that the digraph PH represents the IPA F sound in words such as telephone, phonograph, philosophy, physics, and physician. In words that use the digraph CH, but instead of the CH sound, they are the K sound, we see these in words such as school, mechanic, chorus, chord, chaos, chemistry, and schedule. Now French, as we've uh, discussed earlier, uh, had a Latin basis as well. And sometimes the particular spellings would be changed by their pronunciation because of their French influence. So, for example, the CH in these words are pronounced as the SH sound instead of a CH or K sound. So, for example, in words such as machine or schedule in British English pronunciation. Words that use the digraph or trigraph DG or DGE, such as judge or judgment. Let's do another graphemic analysis. This time looking at words that come from a Latin Greek or French via Latin or Latin via French rather basis. Here are four words. Relationship, psychology, judicial, acrophobia. So first we're going to count the number of phonemes. So once again, we've placed the International Phonetic Alphabet spelling on the screen. Now you will notice with many Greek and Latin words that the number of sounds is a much closer in terms of the number of graphemes that we're going to see. Uh, part of it, the number of letters that we're going to see. So for example, let's take the word relationship. We're going to count how many letters we see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, and 12. But when we count the number of sounds, you will notice that it's actually fairly close. 10 sounds with 12 letters. Part of it, of course, is depending on the certain spellings that we have in the word. 
But one of the nice things about Latin and Greek is that oftentimes the letters themselves are going to be connected to a single sound. Let's try the first one again as an example. R, E, L, A, SH, uh, N, SH, E, P. So again, lots of sounds to match almost exactly the individual letters that we see. Now, of course, we will see in just a moment how the graphemes will break down. Let's look at the others. So again, in psychology, we have eight sounds. Let's see how many letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, ten letters here, but eight sounds. So again, not, uh, it's fairly close. In judicial, seven sounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. In acrophobia, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten letters, and nine sounds. So again, with Latin Greek Greek based words, you will see that oftentimes there's a stronger connection between sounds uh, and their spelling. Now let's break it down into their graphemes. So remember, the idea is that we have to have the same number of graphemes to represent the individual sounds. So for example, once again in relationship, the TI represents the SH sound. And of course here the SH also represents the SH sound. In psychology, we recognize that the P is silent and that the CH represents the K sound. In judicial, the CI would represent the SH sound. And in acrophobia, the PH represents the F sound. So again, we notice that the number of letters is much closer to the number of sounds, mainly because Latin and Greek had a stronger connection between sound and spelling. Now let's come back to French for just a moment. As mentioned before, the Old Norman or French language greatly influenced the development of English bringing many Latin-based words into the language, though sometimes affecting their pronunciation. French also brought many loan words, or words that English directly borrowed, meaning that their spelling and their pronunciation to a degree are identical to that in French. This makes understanding their graphemic representations in English very difficult. Often these are words that we just have to memorize. Now, other languages brought loan words too, obviously Latin, Greek, those are loan words of a sort, with French, we often took their direct spellings as well. So as you see in these examples, let's take a look at them. These are words that we use exactly the same way in English. We didn't change their spellings. And we try to at least maintain their French pronunciation, though you will notice with some changes. First, let's say the words. Espionage. Poignant. Hors d'oeuvre. Now the problem, of course, is we see the pronunciations, but they don't seem to help us by looking at the spelling. Well, again, because these are loan words, it's going to be much more difficult to assign a graphemic representation. So first, we're going to count the number of phonemes based on the International Phonetic Alphabet spelling. So espionage has eight, poignant has seven, but notice the last word, this very, very long word, has only four sounds. This is going to be kind of tricky when, it, when we're trying to determine the graphemic representation. So let's try to do that, but it may be tricky. Now in our first example, the sounds and the letters matched fairly closely, except for the zh sound at the end, each individual letter connects to an, uh, an actual IPA sound. But in the second two words, you will notice that English actually did something different. Mostly because these sounds probably did not exist in English. Instead, English made some changes. So for example, with the G and the N, that is actually represented here by the N combination. However, the pronunciation is different in French. But English basically switched the two because it didn't seem to make us, uh, didn't seem to be as common in terms of pronunciation. Now we see in the final word, again a very long word, 
but only four sounds. In fact, the very first part here is represented only by the single phoneme or. We have d, uh, er, uh, er here, or er, sorry, and then v. The problem here is in the French spelling, the er sound actually is supposed to come after the v, but English put it before. Well, again, part of the problem is this, this combination is not very common in English. So instead, English metathesized or switched the pronunciations of these sounds because they are not common in the language. Again, these are words taken directly from French with virtually no changes. But English uh, had to accommodate its pronunciation somewhat. So what this tells us about these types of words is that, like other loan words, again, the words we saw from Latin and Greek and so on, often have to be memorized in order to spell and pronounce them correctly. Part 4, Review In this video, we learned how to use the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, to determine the number of phonemes in a word. We also learn how to connect those phonetic symbols to their appropriate graphemic representations in English, keeping in mind the following things. Number one, the number of phonemes is equal to the number of graphemes in a word. Number two, the languages of origin and the different ways they influence spelling, for example, the KN, and pronunciation, the IPA zh sound. Number three, we had to keep in mind that English has more sounds, again between 44 and 47, than letters in the alphabet. But when looking at individual words, it will often be the opposite. There will be more letters than sounds. And finally, number four, several loan words, again words borrowed from French, Greek, Latin, and so on, have graphemic representations that are more difficult to match to their IPA representations. These are words whose spellings and pronunciations must be memorized. In our next video series, we will begin our discussion of the prosodic features of English, including rhythm and stress, intonation, focus, and thought groups. Once again, I encourage you to visit the Kenton ESL Educational Website Series, Speaking and Pronunciation and Vocabulary Development, and also, uh, as you noticed in today's video, the use of Dictionary.com. There are actually several excellent online dictionaries, but Dictionary.com, of course, is probably the biggest and most well-known. They include pronunciations, IPA spellings, definitions, and word origins. It's an excellent source. And finally, I would encourage you once again to check out other videos on YouTube to help with pronunciation, especially Rachel's English, which again I think is an excellent video series teaching the individual sounds of English. We'll see you next time for the Advanced Speaking and Pronunciation Series.